I'm going to cut right to the chase here. I think Breakpoint is bad. Really bad. You know that one friend that thinks he's a badass, that thinks he is some deep intellectual or thinks he is super popular? That's Breakpoint in video game form. Some might say that's also me, a pseudo-intellectual who rants about video games and never has anything nice to say. And that may be true, but that doesn't change what Breakpoint is. From the very beginning, there is a schism in the game's identity. What is this title? It's open world, it's a looter, it's got RPG mechanics, it's got a huge social hub with tons of players, but the rest is instanced. It's got one dialogue choice during the entire beta experience, and that one simple dialogue choice had pretty meaningless options. And there's even a splash of survival with a water and food mechanic that impacts stamina, and is purely annoying rather than engaging. From top to bottom, this game has no idea what it wants to be, and plays more like a kindergarten circle story where each child picks the next line of dialogue rather than a cohesive video game. As anyone who has ever done that exercise knows, it leads to little Sally walking through the woods, getting eaten by a bear, then resurrected by aliens while Abraham Lincoln tells a fairy tale to walking frogs. Obviously this is hyperbole, but the sad thing is, only a little bit. The game has strong looter elements, but those looter mechanics are in diametric opposition to the tactical shooter identity of Ghost Recon. RPG mechanics rely on progressive upgrades which increase combat power. A tactical shooter, on the other hand, with thematic realism in terms of combat damage and pacing, such as Ghost Recon, cannot abide by the inclusion of forced difficulty as a function of health and damage. And so you have one system that cannot be done right while the other system exists, leading to a split personality that really cannot possibly be good. On a subjective level, I love looter games. The basic idea of loot in Ghost Recon should, in theory, appeal to me, but it can't because these are two themes, tactical shooter with a stealth emphasis and RPG looter, that don't go well, like orange juice after brushing your teeth. I played a number of hours and acquired a large amount of gear. Admittedly, this was not endgame gear, but from every indication I could find, the stats that are available have minimal impact on combat performance. I'm sure that with min-maxed sets and the best weapons available, there will be more of a noticeable difference, but even when fighting enemies that far surpassed my own level, as well as the level of all of my equipped gear, there was no deviation that I could find. This seemed to be because there was a noticeable effort to maintain the tactical element of single-tap headshot kills, and because of that, enemies were either spongy to the body or instantly dead when shooting the head, and this seemed consistent between a grey level 2 weapon or a stronger weapon with 20 times the gear score. There is, however, an exception to this. In some world areas, there are behemoths, massive armored tanks with dual miniguns, missiles, mortars, and whatever else, that are rather interesting in terms of fight dynamics, but these, along with certain drones that roam the world, feel more like uncomfortable and unnecessary level barriers rather than interesting encounters. If these were the only mismatched systems, it might be salvageable, I guess, but as I said earlier, there seem to be a myriad of other crammed-in mechanics that play like a video game version of Frankenstein's monster. On the one hand, the animation of filling your canteen can be cool, but the necessity for food and water to avoid a marginal stamina debuff is pointless. Why is it there? This is not a true survival game, with meaningful food and water systems, so why have this tiny annoyance that requires time players will not want to spend in order to constantly keep up with it? This is an area where perhaps the endgame expands like a blooming rose. It could be true. Maybe there is a wide range of buffs and benefits to food that can be cooked with ingredients and recipes and whatever else, which might be cool, but would it really be cool in a Ghost Recon game? Yet again, it is a system that feels wildly out of place, and for me, spurs confusion rather than satisfaction. Then there is the lone dialogue choice. I'm not opposed to impactful decision making in games, I never have been and certainly never will be, but after many hours of playing in quite a few story missions, the full amount that the beta contained, I had been faced with one choice and as stated in the beginning, it seemed completely trivial. If the game expands outwards into a true RPG with world building choices that carry real consequences in future missions, that may be phenomenal, but from what was shown, it is a trivial, meaningless, tacked on placebo that has no value or purpose and is hardly even utilized. To be completely honest, I got distinct Anthem vibes from the dialogue choice that was given. Then there is the story itself, and the characters. I don't know what it is, but Ubisoft has a unique talent for making ugly characters. By itself, that really isn't all that bad, but when you combine ugly characters with a slow-paced and emotionless dialogue delivery style, it makes for a boring game. 
I won't spoil it, I guess, but there is a critical moment shown in the beta which feels like it should be extremely emotional, shocking, and important, but it just unfolds with absolutely no emphasis, like the world's worst actors in an amateur play that they didn't even prepare for. The one saving grace for character investment is John Bernthal, the actor behind the main villain, and that's probably only true because I greatly enjoy his other work, and even then, it was like a watered-down worse version of him, void of the passion and emotion that can be seen in his other work, such as The Walking Dead or the movie Fury. The main character, that is your character, is a dead-eyed corpse. There is a total lack of response to pretty much every possible thing that could carry weight, and the result is a distinct feeling that the characters don't care. And if the characters don't care, why should the player care? It's almost as if they took every single scene that is clearly meant to contain emotion and removed all of the subtext, all of the nonverbals, and all of the subconscious communication or expression, leaving slow-paced, badly delivered lines in a monotone format with uncomfortably long silences and dead-eye stares. Speaking of dead stares and bad interaction, we now arrive at the populated social hub where they throttle your movement speed, funnily enough, just like Anthem. Why does this exist? Following up on the Wildlands format, the game does have co-op potential, there is a PvP playlist at launch, that's kind of cool, and these aspects certainly have a social element, but the shared world social hub is meaningless. The only thing I can think of is that this is an area deliberately designed to incentivize players to purchase microtransactions and show them off to each other, which again is something sort of fine, I guess, and there appears to be a comprehensive fashion system which I can always appreciate, but keeping in mind this is a Ghost Recon game, it's yet another element that doesn't quite fit right. Here is where I will inevitably face criticism by fans for glossing over the social aspect, but it's fun with friends, co-op makes it better, and blah blah blah. Sure, yes, it is probably far more enjoyable with a solid group of friends who are goofing off together, but then what isn't? I cannot give praise to a game for providing an opportunity to enjoy the company of friends when an infinite number of alternative activities can provide the exact same thing, and they are also completely free. You can kick a rock in the street with a friend and have fun, but you don't pay $60 for the rock because it enables that social fun. Likewise, Ghost Recon Breakpoint can undoubtedly provide fun co-op gameplay, but I cannot justify allowing that to be used as armor when so many other titles provide the exact same thing purely based on the peer-to-peer -peer enjoyment of your own social group. Now, finally, for the positive stuff before wrapping up. The driving mechanics have been largely improved since Wildlands, at least in my opinion. The world is as gorgeous as ever despite some screen tearing issues on console and other problematic texture glitches, but largely speaking, it is an open world that feels ripe with potential. There are some clever mechanics as well, like the prone camouflage or the pseudo cover system, but the cover system is janky and more often than not just results in your shoulder aim being swapped to the opposite one when you didn't even tell it to do so. The game feels like a mashup between Far Cry, The Division, and Wildlands, with a few other flavors thrown in for good measure. The cover is not a true system, such as The Division, so it feels awkward. The gear as well is a half measure that, at least early on, feels entirely unnecessary, so again, awkward, even though I desperately wanted it to be cool. The dialogue choices in RPG scaling are awkward. The slight dash of survival elements, the shared world social hub, and half a dozen other things I can't think of right now are just pointless, and the call the combination of it all is a game that feels like it has no soul. My honest impression is that this was made to maximize profit. Focus groups were formed and a decision made to create a composite game that fused elements from Ubisoft's other successful franchises, and they rolled with the idea of having the all-in-one Ghost Recon game. Division fans would play because they jammed in loot, Far Cry fans would play because they jammed in RPG elements, Assassin's Creed fans would play because they redid the skill tree and maybe jammed in dialogue choices, I don't know anymore. And the speculative desire in my eyes was a game for everyone that only succeeded, again in my opinion, at appealing to no one. It's an early slice of the game and some will claim, it's a beta, don't be so critical. Yeah, it carries the tag of beta, but it's not a beta, it's a demo. Mechanics aren't changing between now and launch. A few bugs will get fixed, I guess. A couple textures upgraded, that might happen. And perhaps music will be tweaked or added and animations improved. But the framework and bones of what this game is, they are not changing. 
It's possible that all of these systems bloom outward in the endgame, with crafting, dialogue choices, suddenly compelling characters, deep and rewarding loot, or whatever else, but let me ask you, what is the likelihood of not one, but a dozen unique systems that are often done poorly elsewhere by themselves, all coalescing in a single game where their mere existence running parallel is already enough to create confusion? What are the chances of this game doing everything right, or even passably well, while most other games the title is seemingly based on can really only do one or two? Ghost Recon Breakpoint is enigmatic. It's strange, it's confusing, and it might be a great game to some, but I am thoroughly unenthused and find myself unable to recommend the game at this stage. This seems like a great example of wait for the real reviews. Not the mainstream gaming sites, the ones that give practically every game two or three points higher than they deserve, because who knows why. Wait for reviews that you trust. Not necessarily me or mine, but someone you trust wholeheartedly, because Breakpoint is not a safe purchase, and definitely not a safe pre-order. That's it for today. I may change these opinions if, like I said, it all improves after launch and towards endgame, but I don't have high expectations. If you want to support, check out the links down below. I'm attempting to grow the Twitter page right now, so that in particular, if you want to hear bad jokes and lots of insults, there's a link down below in the description. Please follow the Twitter page. Other stuff too, Patreon, yada yada, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.